Hey guys, it's Kalen from Draft Studios here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I made a shark logo for a recent Jesuit robotics project. I'm going to guide you guys exactly how I made this, and um, you'll be able to follow along on my computer screen now. So let's go. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, create a new document. I prefer to work on a letter size page. Um, in RGB since this is going to be probably mostly for um, web stuff. Make sure everything's here is all good. I may create a few artboards if you want to um, be making multiple drafts of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a circle here. Uh, switch fill, control shift X and I'm going to get rid of that um, that line value which is X to switch and then you press um, the slash mark to make it zero. So this right now is not, I'm pretty sure is not a complete black, but that's okay. I want to make this bigger. So um, basically how I normally start my designs is I will turn on the grid in Illustrator and I'll turn on snap to grid. So now whenever I move something around, it will snap to the grid makes things a lot easier to maneuver around and uh, deal with when you're using grids. So uh, my team preferred having jagged waves like this um, even though I gave them the smooth wave option. And I'm going to show you guys how to do the smooth wave option in case you like that more. Because um, I know for sure some people are definitely going to like that a lot more than these jagged waves. There you go, that's enough waves. So here's my jagged waves, and then to make them smooth waves, you're basically just going to want to go on each point, add a handles on them, make these handles like about one grid square long, which if you turn on the rulers, um, turn this to inches, it's about one eighth of an inch is one grid square. And just like that, you're going to have smooth waves, but an easier way to do that, instead of taking this, what you've made already, is starting a, a completely new line and as you make each point dragging out dragging out these handles as you go this will make some nice smooth waves like that but um, I prefer making nice uh, jagged waves and that's how my team liked it so that's what we're gonna stick with now what you're, you're gonna want to do is actually outline the stroke on this and turn the stroke into a fill so you're going to want to go Object, Path, Outline Stroke. Now this is probably the most important tool I've learned. It makes, for me, like editing things a lot quicker. Same with this as well. So if you select two objects, you can go up here, align a key object, press on this object, and center that. Now you can align objects a lot faster. Um, so this is not exactly two grid squares, but I'm going to make it two grid squares because it makes everything a lot neater. As you can see, they stack nice and neatly. Hmm, perfect. Okay, so now you have the waves done. We're going to want to turn these all to white. And uh, there we go. So those are the waves. Uh, how I actually have the waves right now is I delete every other one. So delete top, delete this one, delete this one. So, so, so those are the waves. And now I'm going to want to make the shark. So how I do this is I select this. I'm going to make a copy of this. Pull this into my next artboard. Uh, make this feel like red or something easy to spot. Uh, I'm going to start drawing out. I'm going to start. Oh shit, the audio has been shit this whole time. Okay, I'm going to start drawing out the, um, I'm going to start drawing out the actual, like, shark fin now. So, how I did this is, this is going to be the top of the shark. It's going to be the, the bottom. Actually, on the top, you're going to want to have a little doopy doo there. A little doopy doo there. And, um, on the bottom, you can just, you can just make this straight, actually. And you're gonna want to take this about two, two out. Um, add handles there. It's a little extreme. And we're gonna want to handle this back up. 
So there is a shark shake. So this is just your basic uh, rough draft of the shark. So from here, you're probably going to want to extend out, oopsie daisies, extend out these ha this handle a little bit more just to elongate that um, shark shake. Take that handle over here, make that nice and clean. So I have one handle right here. Extend this one in a little to have more of that. Um, it's almost kind of like the back fin. There we go. Now this is the front of the fin. And what I was trying to do before was move this handle. Um, I'm going to get like a little bit sideways more. Um, there we go. Now it's like shark fin, right? Okay, so that took way longer than I thought it would. But uh, now I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to flip it. Just turn it around 180 degrees. Go here, transform. Uh, no. Transform, reflect. Horizontal. Going to make it like this. Flip it over again. And... Um, I'll take this over here, size it down to only one grid square or one and a half grid squares. Uh, move it over a little bit. Now here, because I made this original fin so small in the grid, you're going to want to probably unenable snap to grid and just move it a little bit by hand. And this is going to be kind of like an inlet cut into the shark. So let's make this blue and white. And um, if that looks good to you, which it doesn't, it looks a little fat. Extend it down. Um, now, here you can just kind of play with it. Get it exactly how you like it. So, like, really, at this point, it's all kind of personal preference. Um, I'm just kind of arranging it how I think it's going to look good. And I think it looks good. So you're going to want to open your Pathfinder panel, which for me is open already. Um, expand that. And you're going to do minus front. So that's just going to create a compound shape, just like this. That is now your dorsal fin, and your and that little cutout. So now let's center both of these on the artboard. Uh, let's move this down here, and um, just make sure they're centered one more time. And now you're going to want to move this probably just a little bit up. Make sure all the tips are within these guidelines. There we go. You're going to take that and Command Shift G, ungroup that. Press A and delete each of these individual paths. Now, see right here, this is really pissing me off. So I'm just going to take that back. Oh my god, Snap to Grid. Turn off Snap to Grid and take this back here. Just move that a little bit inwards. Delete that. There you go, that's a little bit better. And then one more remaining right there. So now when you take this and you move it on to your original artwork, you center it. Oh, shit. No, you go over here. Permanent align to key object. Press B with both of these. Press on that again. Key object align. It's already aligned up, it says. Move these move this down until you find where it fits. Uh, here can be a little bit lower. So really the whole point of this is to make sure that the bottom of the shark doesn't go underneath the water here. And then from here, if you want to play around with this a little bit, you still can. Um, this shark fin is abnormally small, actually. I want to make this a lot bigger. So let's resize this. And uh, let's do what we did again. So take this. You want to command, copy, command, shift, paste, which is paste in place. I'm going to do this again, minus front, and now you want to press the A tool. And you're going to want to select these bottom parts down here, which should have been cut by the Pathfinder tool, and delete them. That's one more. And then see how there's spots here where it's not exactly lining up right. No. I want to click these points and just align them. That way it looks better. S same thing with these endpoints right here. See how sometimes. They don't like exactly line up how you want them to. And now uh, you're just going to want to stretch these out a little bit. 
won't be perfect, but then at least it will still uh, look good. Okay, so you just want to move this over here, make this path line up exactly. Take this, um, see how this is not exactly aligned to the end here. That's no bueno, so you're gonna wanna just shift that over a little bit. Um, and that is as long as you're fine with these not lining up exactly how they should be. And I'm okay with that. Or if you want to, you can make them line up inverse of each other. So how I would do that is um, putting a ruler or guide right there. And that's where the bottom of this crest should be. Line that up, and there's still going to be these really gross, almost like um, edges here. I just want to shift that over a little bit so those edges don't exist anymore. There we go, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And then this bottom one, I just want to shift this so there's no awkward edges. That's pretty good. Uh, if you want to, shift this up a little bit so it's not. Um, encroaching upon that bottom part there. Move that up to two. Navigate. Move this around a little. Because that moves up, you're going to want to move that two up. One move this path, two up. Or just one up. <laughs> Once again, all this is kind of just preference. Turn off that grid, delete um, all this. Now, if you're working on this for a company, you're probably gonna wanna keep um, all, so all the work that you do for this, all the different files you make, you're gonna wanna keep those as well just for documentation and for later, if they want you to change something, then you can easily change it. Uh, I made that mistake when I was first designing uh, logos, I would delete everything, and then when I had to go back and make changes, I couldn't. Um, because it was all gone. But this should be good. Uh, I made a copy there. Just That's just good habits. And you want to press minus front. And now, this should be clear. So it should go through on any background. So if you have color over here, like that. And move that to front. It's going to show up nice and clear. And as well, what makes this nice as well, um, if you had a compound shape like this, it would be a little bit harder. As you can see, the fill isn't constant. But here, the fill is constant, so you can change this to white, for example, to show up on a blue background easier, uh, which is nice. And, yep, it's pretty cool. So let's take this. Let's size this down a little. Let's get some nice font pairing with it. And let's think of a name. What are, what are we going to call this one? I uh, like Helvetica. Oh, I don't have Helvetica downloaded. Um, let's try. Let's try the font. Okay, so let's try the font Moon, and choose something bold, and we'll go something like uh, Wave Design Studios. There we go. Let's make this text white. It's here. And here's another use of a line to object. Oopsie daisies. And I like the command shift object because it makes things align better when you're using text. Um, it's non editable, so you can't edit the text now, but at least it like aligns well. And if you know that's going to be the name or the title, then it works well. And there we go. There is our finished logo for wave wave design studios very clean let's group these line them center them ah there you go wave design studios there's your finished logo thanks for watching guys uh, if you enjoy this kind of quick tutorial of me making this logo uh, like and subscribe here at draft studios we make a lot of other cool content besides just these kind of uh, logo run through videos. Uh, we do reviews of tech and other stuff. So make sure you guys subscribe if you like what you see. 
Uh, check out our other videos, and uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.